In this section, we will cover some tree-based data structures. The first two are very useful for various query problems, like the RMQ problem that we covered for dynamic programming. The last one is an easier but still very efficient alternative to the commonly used balanced binary search trees. All of them are useful for programming interviews, contests, and in practice. In this video, we are going to talk about segment trees and the range minimum query problem. Recall the RMQ problem from the previous section. We have to answer multiple questions, such as what is the minimum between array of A and so on up until array of B. But now we also have updates. An update sets an array element to a given value. Therefore, dynamic programming is no longer efficiently applicable. Segment trees are binary trees in which each node has an associated segment. And it also has some information regarding this segment. In our case, it is going to be the minimum in the associated segment. For example, let's consider this array. We would have the following segment tree for it. The root node would be associated to the interval or the segment corresponding to the entire array. The minimum in the entire array is 1. And so on. For example, this node is associated with the segment 3, 4, so this subarray here, and its minimum is 4. I encourage you to pause the video here and make sure that you understand how the tree looks like and why these are the values and why these are the values stored in each node. In order to store the segment tree, we are going to use the same method that heaps use. So we are going to use an array, let's call it seg, where seg of 0 is the root, seg of 2 times 0 plus 1 is the left child, and seg of 2 times 0 plus 2 is the right child, and so on. If the length of the initial array is n, then we have n leaf nodes, n divided by two parents, and so on. In total, we are going to have 2 times n minus 1 nodes. You can count the nodes on the previous slide, and you will see that this holds. Therefore, we are going to declare seg as an array of size 2 to the power of k, where k is the minimum value, such that 2 to the power of k is larger than or equal to 2 times n minus 1. In order to execute a query, we are going to find all topmost nodes whose segments make up the query segment. For query 27, for example, we are going to look at the following nodes. So 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 7. We can see that if we take these nodes associated intervals, we get the query interval. And these are the topmost nodes for which this holds. And if we take the minimum out of these nodes, then we can answer this query. For an update, we start at the leaf associated with k and then go up. So for example, in order to execute update 510, we would start at the leaf whose associated interval is 55, set its value to 10, and then update its parents up until the root node. In order to answer a query, time complexity will be order log n. The same will be true for an update. And in order to initialize the tree from the given array, we will have an order n log n method, which will simply call update for each element. Let's now go into our code editor and implement this. So I have written the naive query and update methods here. You've seen the naive query one in the DP solution as well in the previous section. And now let's write the segment tree query. This will take as parameters n, which is the size of the initial array, the segment tree array, and the query interval. We are going to use an inner function that will take as parameter the current node index, and the current node's associated segment. First of all, if the current node's associated segment does not intersect the query segment, so if write is lower than 
a or left is larger than b, then we simply return infinity, because this node cannot contribute to the answer. Otherwise, if a is lower than or equal to left and the right is lower than or equal to b, that is, the current node's associated interval is completely included within the query interval, then we return the minimum stored for that interval, that is, segment tree of node. Otherwise, we compute the midpoint of the current interval and return the minimum between a recursive call to the left subtree, that is node index 2 times node plus 1, and associated interval left m, and the node index 2 times node plus 2, and associated interval m plus 1, right. The initial call will be 0 for current node index, and 0 to n minus 1 associated interval for the root. The update function is quite similar. We are also going to be using an inner recursive function, which will take the same parameters. Again, we check if k is outside the current node's associated interval, in which case we simply return. Otherwise, we check if left is equal to right, that is, if we are at a leaf node. Because of the first condition, if this is true, then left is also equal to k. Therefore, we set segment tree of node to be equal to v. This is the update part. And we also return. Otherwise, we compute the midpoint again, call the inner function recursively for the two halves. Then, after the two halves have been updated, we need to update the current node as well. So we will have segment tree of node is equal to the minimum between segment tree of the left child, so 2 times node plus 1, and the right child, so segment tree of 2 times node plus 2. The initial call is the same. And then we have some test code here. First of all, we generate an array. Then we build the segment tree by calling the update function for each element in the array. Then we generate queries and updates, each with a probability of 0.5, that is with a chance of 50%. And we compare the query results with the naive query algorithm. Let's run these tests and see if they pass. It might take a while, so please be patient. You can see that they do pass, so our implementation is correct. I encourage you to spend some time understanding these functions, as they will be very useful in future videos as well.